Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry Lai and welcome back to my sports photography channel. For those of you joining me for the very first time, I currently serve as the Director of Content and Photography at USA Today Sports. And I have been lucky enough to have been in the photojournalism industry for over 16 years. My goal for the channel is to help you become a better sports photographer. If you think that I can help you out, hit that like button and subscribe. A few weeks ago, I shared a video that discussed my recommended settings for sports photography. You may recall from that video that I said that shutter speed was the most important setting in the exposure triangle when it comes to sports photography. And that's because it is the setting that you dial in to freeze the action. In that video, I also mentioned that 1 1600th of a second was my usual starting point when dialing in my shutter speed. I did end up getting a few comments back saying that 1 1600th of a second really isn't that feasible with older gear or those of us who shoot in really, really dark venues. And well, they're right. So today on the channel, I want to talk about some of the absolute lowest shutter speeds that you could get away for specific sports. Before we really dive into today's content, I need to recap why I use 1 1600th of a second as my default starting shutter speed. Ultimately, that is the shutter speed that I find adequately high enough to freeze all normal human motion. But it still leaves me a little bit of wiggle room to make some fine adjustments if the exposures or situations dictate. But why don't I go higher than that? Isn't a faster shutter speed going to be better to freeze the action? Well, yes, but also no. Just remember, there is no free lunch in photography. The price that you have to pay for these faster shutter speeds is you have to shoot with a wider aperture or lower f-stop number or increase the ISO and thus introduce more noise into your frame. Now, in sports photography, your aperture is normally going to be set as wide open as your lens allowed. So the only way that you can pay for this higher shutter speed is by increasing your ISO. So you can see there is a little bit of a balancing act when juggling ISO and shutter speed. With all that said, let's go explore the specific settings for some individual sports. Let's start with the most popular sport worldwide, soccer. This game is pretty pure, isn't it? Players don't wear any bulky protective gear. There aren't any sticks, rackets, helmets, or any other equipment required. So when you really boil the sport down, all you're looking to capture is normal human action. And for that, 1 1600th of a second will pretty much freeze everything. Sure, you could dial the shutter speed up, but there really is no advantage to it. Your action isn't getting any more frozen. But just how low can you go? In darker venues or with older gear earlier in my career, I did have to reduce my shutter speed well below that. As you can see, even in cases where I've had to drop down to 1 1,000th of a second, all the action in the frame is still frozen. It's not until you get down to 1 800th of a second where you start to see some motion blur, but only in the fingertips or in the feet when one is kicking the ball. Similar results can be seen at 1 640th of a second. And truth be told, you might be able to drop down to even lower than that, down to 1 500th or possibly even to 1 400th if you're not shooting at the professional level. Now that last statement does come with a big disclaimer. Shutter speeds down to 1 500 or 1 400 are not what I recommend for day-to-day -day sports photography. But know that is something you could get away with if your lighting conditions or gear requires you to drop down that low. You'll just have to live with the fact that you may get some motion blur and some peak action where players are at their fastest point in movement will be lost due to that motion blur. Okay, so now that I've talked about football, what about football? So now, what about the most popular sport here in America? Football. Shutter speeds needed for American football are pretty comparable to what you'd use in soccer. In other words, you don't need anything crazy fast. And just like with soccer, you actually have quite a lot of leeway to reduce the shutter speed if you have to. 
Once again, starting with my default shutter speed at 1 1600th of a second, you'll see that all action in these frames are frozen throughout. Like with soccer, I can increase the shutter speed higher than that, but there's no advantage to it. The action doesn't get more frozen. All I'm really doing is introducing more noise. On the flip side, you could drop your shutter speed down a click or two, and as you can see, everything in your photos will remain sharp. It's only down to around 1 800th of a second or less when you start to see some motion blur, particularly when quarterbacks drop back to pass. This is not really all that surprising because the snapping motion when someone goes back to pass is very abrupt. So now to answer the question that you all are asking, how low can you push that shutter speed for football? As low as you can for soccer? In my very early days as a sports photographer, I photographed two high schools in the Chicago suburbs. And I'll tell you what, those fields were freaking dark at night. In those instances, I had to shoot at all the way down to 1 400th of a second. Again, this is far from ideal, but at the slower speeds of high school athletics, I was able to get away with that for some of the action. Again, just like with soccer, at those very low speeds, you're gonna to start to see quite a bit of fingertip or foot in motion blur, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So by this point in the video, you're probably gonna start picking up on a recurring theme here. When I arrive at the venue, I start with a default shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second. From there, I'll adjust accordingly. Well, when it comes to basketball, I adjust. The two basketball arenas that I have primarily photographed at, the United Center for the Chicago Bulls and Welsh Ryan Arena for Northwestern, are pretty darn dark. I'm forced to drop my shutter speed down to 1 1000th just to get a proper exposure without using crazy high ISO in both of these locations. But as you probably guessed, because this is a sport that doesn't use bats, sticks, or unusually quick movements, that's generally good enough to freeze all normal human motion. Now, I don't have any specific examples of me shooting at higher shutter speeds than this, but as you can imagine, shutter speeds higher than this don't freeze the action any better. They all just look the same, but with slightly more noise. So once again, though, I asked the question at the start of this video. How low can you go? Well, one click lower at 1 800th of a second. Not surprisingly, most action is still frozen. Now, how about one full stop slower, down to 1 400th of a second? Well, once again, for hoops, you can maybe get away with it. And when I crop into these photos, you would probably have a hard time believing that the shutter speed was this slow. But it's once I zoom out and pull out, you'll see that at these speeds, you do start to see some motion blur in the limbs and the tips. Once again, shutter speeds this slow are, is not what I would recommend starting with, but something in your toolbox that you could reach into and use if you have to. So as a recap, sports like this, soccer, football, or basketball, where it's mostly just human natural movements, you could get away with slow shutter speeds because people just can't move that fast. But what about something like baseball? So let's talk baseball. Yeah, you're right. These are people playing the game. They don't move any faster in baseball than they do in football, hockey, soccer, or anything else. In fact, one might argue they barely move at all. The difference with baseball is they play with a ball that fits in the palm of your hand. The size and characteristics of a baseball allow it to be thrown at over 90, sometimes 100 miles per hour. Now, as for bats, it's estimated that elite professional hitters can swing them at between 70 to 90 miles per hour. So at these speeds, we're certainly gonna to have to need to use a higher shutter speed to freeze the action, right? Well, the answer is sort of. Take a look at these photos of batters swinging at 1 1600th of a second. Clearly, this shutter speed is not fast enough to freeze the action as the ball and the bat are both blurred. Now, what happens if I increase that shutter speed? Is this better? Is this any better still? How much do we actually have to crank this thing up if we want a totally frozen bat and totally frozen ball?
Well, depending on the level of baseball you are shooting, you're probably looking at one four thousandth of a second minimum, possibly higher in the MLB. And truth be told, these speeds are not super practical. Because at these speeds, you're going to be limited to shooting only under bright sunny conditions or at absurdly high ISOs. So there are actually a couple of workarounds to this. One, consider using a follow through photo. Sure, there is no more ball in the frame, but everything in the picture is sharp. Alternatively, of course, you could just reduce your shutter speed. And just like the other sports, it all comes down to how much blur that you or your clients can live with. The lower your shutter speed, the more blur in the ball and the bat you're going to have. Fortunately, when it comes to baseball photography, at least editorially, some amount of blur in your batter photos is accepted. Those who work in the industry pretty much know there is no practical way to freeze batter action, at least under normal lighting conditions. It's not going to be a bluebird sunny day every single day. That said, pitchers and plays in the field are a completely different story. These you should be able to freeze without any problem. At my default speed of 1 hundredth of a second, except for the hardest throwers and contortionists in baseball, you should be able to freeze most pitchers in their motion. Likewise, plays in the field should be fine at this speed. As before, you can increase your shutter speed slightly, but the action isn't going to get more frozen. And like with the other sports, you could dip down a few clicks and still get away with it. Just be careful not to dip too low, because especially with pitchers, you will start getting some arm blur in their throwing motion. So at the end of the day, you may have to explore different settings for yourself and talk it over with your clients and end users and see what is comfortable for all of you guys to use. Anyways, that will do it for today. I hope this video really helped you out. Just as a recap, my starting shutter speed when I walk into a stadium or venue will be 1 1600th of a second. But as you've seen from a number of examples, I may go a click or two higher depending on lighting conditions. But quite frankly, doing so isn't going to yield any more keeper photos, even at the speed of professional sports. On the other hand, lighting conditions will sometimes dictate that I drop down far lower than that. And as you now have seen, in many occasions, I am down to 1 800th of a second. And in those instances, the frames are still completely acceptable. And in the darkest of the dark situations, I've managed to dip even lower. Just understand, if you drop down to these extreme levels, by sports standards, you are going to reduce your keeper rate because you will have quite a bit of motion blur, especially in the fingertips and in the feet. So just know this is a tool in your photography toolbox that you could use if, and only if, you really need to use it. Thank you very much as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Be sure to also ring that notification bell so you can be alerted as to when new content drops. I try to come out with videos every two to four weeks or so. Thanks again for stopping by today. I can't wait to see you all again next time. Happy shooting. Bye.